Sleep apnea, when we talk about it, there are two types of sleep apnea. One is obstructive sleep apnea, where the airway tends to shut when you relax the airway, which occurs during sleep. And the other apnea that we often allude to is central apnea, which is a, a very different uh, medical issue. But most commonly we see obstructive apnea where people snore, it's often associated with gasping at night, choking, poor quality sleep, extremely noisy sleeping environment. And uh, that probably in, in North America now is mostly related uh, to weight gain, increasing airway pressure from the increased weight gain. Um, obstructive apnea is extremely common and there's some estimates that it can be anywhere up to 20 to 25 percent of the population and invariably it's associated with snoring however there are some cases if people have had surgery to the airway they won't snore it's dangerous for a couple of reasons uh, the commonly accepted worry about it is that it is suffocation you're blocking the airway during sleep you're making an effort against a closed airway, so in essence, one's drowning. And what happens at that point is the increased effort, the drop in oxygen, uh, the increased sympathetic surge within the body can precipitate cardiac irregularities, heart arrhythmias. People have even had heart attacks and strokes during these episodes because the oxygen level can go down extremely low. And uh, obviously, there are disruptions to the sleep, which is uh, another problem, leading to daytime accompaniments, anywhere up to a sevenfold increase in motor vehicle crashes or inattentiveness while driving is due to sleep apnea. So the impact on it, uh, first of all, obviously, is a medical issue where it can influence uh, the, the oxygen, as I mentioned, which has its intrinsic risks, it can push up blood pressure, it can then fracture the sleep, and it's the sleep fracture leading to daytime fatigue, intellectual difficulty, concentration difficulty, and then I think something that is often ignored and used to be laughed at was the, the societal impacts where it, you can't share a room with someone else, you make too much noise, people in hotels have been evicted from their rooms because of severe snoring, and I, I often see patients who come in and say to me they're too embarrassed to share accommodations with anyone or go anywhere because of their snoring. There are various ways of addressing the issue and uh, if you break it down to a fairly simple concept which is the airway is too small, it's obstructing and vibrating, you want to try and make that airway bigger and you can make it bigger either by cutting tissue away which uh, we often look at removing tonsils or adenoids or a very large uvula and that's typically uh, not the uvula surgery but tonsils and adenoids in young children who are not overweight. Uh, in adults surgery really is often a, a side treatment strategy. The initial treatment strategies if possible weight loss uh, that can be extremely effective. Uh, we obviously use CPAP machines and there's a little model uh, on my right which shows what a mask looks like and all it does is take pressurized air. It's basically a little air pump that blows air through the nose and splints open the airway, stops it from vibrating. There are dental pieces, oral appliances, we call them mandibular advancement devices or oral appliances that fit in the mouth, on the teeth, pulling the bottom jaw forward, pulling the tongue forward. Uh, as I said, surgery to correct a, an obstructed nose if they're nasal polyps. Sometimes even just using nasal medications if they're polyps associated with asthma can shrink down the polyps, open up the airway. Uh, but the surgical airway, we still send people for surgery if they have very large tonsils because that can be completely curative. Um, we sometimes have people who only snore and have apnea if they're lying on their backs and then we recommend positional training which can be achieved by buying a commercially made device called an anti-snore shirt uh, or a bumper belt which is basically like those little swimming floaty devices that kids wear that have noodles in them, those little uh, polystyrene uh, things and they wear this at night, it's uncomfortable and uh, they can't lie on their backs. There are some new devices that are coming out that are quite interesting. One is a vibratory device that uh, actually attaches with a, almost like a cap to the back of the head and if you're lying completely supine after a while it starts vibrating and the vibrations get longer and longer until you turn over. 
um, there are also some very, very exciting devices coming out that are not available in Canada yet, which is an intra, one of them is an intraoral appliance that has a suction that tends to want to pull the airway forward, opening up the posterior space, which is really exciting, not for severe sleep apnea, but certainly for mild apnea, it can be uh, extremely effective. Well, the uh, good resources, and I think on, uh, at this point on the internet, uh, uh, it's extremely uh, populated with, with a lot of articles, but the Canadian Sleep Society has a lovely website that has a lot of issues about sleep. Our website, uh, the Hamilton Sleep Disorders Clinic, uh, shows, uh, it gives access to websites as well as information on sleep apnea. Um, there are the, the American Sleep Disorders Association has a lovely website. And in fact, you, you, you would really need to dodge uh, quite vigorously to not find a website if you put in sleep apnea uh, on a search. And as always, ask your physician.